1763, the British Empire assumed control over New France. In order to do this, it needed to develop the political infrastructure to imagine its control over a large landscape which it had very little presence on the ground. So it issued what is now called the Royal Proclamation of 1763. In this proclamation, the Crown did two paradoxical things. On one hand, it acknowledged the prior ownership of the land by Indigenous peoples, but on the other, it asserted sovereignty via underlying title over the landscape. So while the British Crown has always on some level recognized indigenous ownership of the land, it has also envisioned itself as sovereign and ultimately the controlling power over that territory. In this module, we're going to be exploring the dynamics of this relationship between the Crown and indigenous peoples and these conflicting claims of ownership. The prior occupation of indigenous peoples, which for the most part was a lived reality, and this more fantastical claim by the British Crown to own land on which it had very little actual presence. Ultimately, the Crown's story of how it came to be the owners of this land, in my opinion, is quite unconvincing. The more convincing story, however, will be explored in this module. The idea is that, rather than just assuming ownership over a territory one could not control, Indigenous peoples actually integrated Europeans into their diplomatic systems, which meant that Europeans came here and participated in, in Indigenous politics on Indigenous terms. The end result is that treaty relationships form the basis for a sustained British presence in what is now Canada, and that Indigenous peoples had an active role in bringing Britain and Canada to this territory.